Good afternoon, everybody. We are so happy you're here. I, I hope I don't ruin this, but Shana Tova, right? Hey. Happy New Year. <laughs> right, Rabbi? Perfect. Okay, thumbs up. <laughs> happy New Year, and welcome to Ms. Recorder University and the Ruth Matthews Berger Women with Children program. My name is Catherine Polidal. I am the director of the Ruth Matthews Berger program, and it's really my honor to welcome you here today. It's a really important day. So we are thrilled that you could be present. So, and with all of our students and everybody who's representing us here today, um, really just a celebration and a dedication of the opening of our fourth Women with Children program home, Anne's House. Which is being named today in loving memory of the incomparable Anne Friedman Glauber. So for the Friedman Glauber family, Sid, Rob, Lily, David, Saskia, Tammy, and Audrey, we welcome you here with the warm embrace of mercy as this special day arrives at such an auspicious time, marked by the start of a new year and also a new chapter for our beloved Women with Children program. I would first like to express our deep gratitude to so many that have made this day possible, so pretty much everybody under this tent and around the back of the tent, along with many who are not here today but are certainly here in spirit. Um, as you can tell with this house next door, there have been a lot of renovations that have been occurring over the last two years, many changes, um, and just the amount of patience to bring this day into such a beautiful reality is one that we really deeply appreciate, and so we are here. To our Misericordia University president, Dan Myers, we are ha we're in his backyard right now. <laughs> But Dan is a little under the weather, so we wish him well. And he may be in one of his windows back here. So shout out to Dan, whichever window he may be in. <laughs> he wasn't joking. I, always, I, I was teasing the women. I'm like, oh, we're going to live right next door to the president. There he is. Woo. You going to shout from there? Okay, well, he's, uh, he's going to watch this now. <laughs> All right, can't screw it up, guys. <laughs> I, I, I warned the women. I said, hey, you know, we're going to be living next to the president. You got to really behave. We have to mind our P's and Q's. And then we found out our president has his own band. And I mean, I don't know. And then somebody just suggested that maybe babysitting in the future because you're right next door. <laughs> you can stay back there. Okay. <laughs> But all kidding aside, this is just, it's just great to have him in close proximity and certainly all of our leadership as well. Um, to our Women with Children Advisory Board members that are here today, our community partners, including Leadership Northeast, that was able to put together an amazing children's play area inside the house, which you'll be able to see after this. Um, we, we thank you, along with Dr. Rosemary Guido, who's not here today um, near Penn State, but also did help us to furnish the interior of the house. Um, really, I also want to acknowledge our university community and so many of the people who help us all the time. So 24-7, our campus safety office and our student life staff, our university advancement team with Tanya and Marianne, Wendy, Larry and Lisa, to our grounds, facilities, housekeeping, food services, you name it, you're all involved. Lori Finnegan, Scott, Jim, Joyce and your crews, we couldn't be here without you, not just today, but every day. We also are honored to have from the state of Pennsylvania some of our great friends of the program, including through the Fair Fund, Clay Lambert, Sarah Goulet, and Catherine Settler from DHS and Governor Wolf's office. And to all of our state leadership present here, thank you for being champions for student parents across the state and for helping our Women with Children program to succeed and certainly grow. And finally, closer to home, literally and figuratively, our Women with Children coordinator, Sandy Johnson. Where are you, Sandy? Oh in the back our kids on campus program all of our women with children families our mu president emeritus michael mcdowell and tina who are here today and the incredible sisters of mercy including our founder sister jean mazeros who is sitting right next to rabbi kaplan and they're both looking at me intently <laughs> thank you for all always serving as an inspiration and north star for our program's mission so, two generation. We say this all the time. Our program embraces the idea that when 
We lift families out of poverty and help them succeed together, both the mother and the child, the whole family succeeds. And although it may be a more challenging road to take, certainly, living in community, raising children, side by side, always, all while studying and working and growing, the end result is clear. It's worth it. It's worth every minute of every day that we give to this endeavor to help our families to thrive. Time and time again, our student mothers will say, I never thought this could be me. I never imagined I would have a degree, a career, a home, a future for me and for my children. It's just remarkable. And we have a number of alumni here today that can speak to that. For us, reshaping the narrative that poverty dictates means opening our doors to women and children from across Pennsylvania and this country and saying to them, yes, you can go to college. Yes, you can dream. Yes, you can work hard. And yes, you can succeed. The days of diminished expectations are over. So to now have two homes on Lake Street within one block of each other, named in memory of a mother and her daughter, Polly Friedman and now Anne Friedman Glauber, we can see how incredibly emblematic this is of our work and our mission as we now have two generations directly reflected among our homes. So thank you. I can only hope that we will always live up to such inspirational namesakes. Anne Freeman Glauber believed that one's life should be lived for a higher purpose, a champion for social justice with a deep commitment to making a positive difference in so many people's lives. Anne's legacy reflects the mercy tradition of empowering women and children through access to education. And even in the face of her own battle with pancreatic cancer, she championed others, launched the Let's Win Foundation, and devoted her energy to making a positive impact in so many lives. And an energy that continues on today and is certainly with us right now. If you can feel that, I think I can. Anne's mother, Polly Friedman, was a profound and compassionate servant leader that left a deep and resonating impact throughout the Wyoming Valley. And in 2007, the Women with Children's Polly House was named in her honor through the support of her husband, Sid, and the Friedman family. The Polly House is right down the road. It's the beautiful blue Cape Cod that we've just renovated as well. One can only imagine that having Polly Friedman for a mom meant looking up to a woman that not only demonstrated an incredible commitment to her own family, work, and devotion to community service, but also provided such inspiration to do the same in the wake of her own remarkable life. Clearly, Anne followed in her mother's footsteps. And through their unwavering commitment to serving others in both of their lives, they directly reflect the Sisters of Mercy and their guiding charisms of mercy, service, justice, and hospitality. And in doing so, both women and their legacy embody the revered motto we hold dear of Molière Fortis, valiant women. Some of our women have the tattoo on their arms. They really believe in it, and it's because it's true. The Friedman Glauber family and the Ruth Matthews Berger Women with Children program are kindred spirits that have built an indelible connection. Joined in a mission to remove barriers to the fulfillment of individual promise and educational achievement. Through your generosity and shaped in a shared belief in the transformational impact of access to higher education, Polly and Anne's unrelenting passion to help others will continue on within both of these cherished homes and in our program forever, two generations at a time. Thank you so much. So it's my distinct pleasure to now introduce our Vice President of Mission Integration and Student Life, who is stepping in for President Dan Myers, who's in the backdrop. Amy Layhart, thank you. Thanks, Catherine. This is really having your supervisor watch from afar. It's a good thing that it's projecting this way. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. On behalf of President Dr. Myers and the Misericordia University community, we gratefully welcome Anne's house to our campus. We offer our deepest appreciation to Sydney and Rob Friedman, 
their generosity and commitment to the mission of Misericordia is ever constant. As we celebrated their contributions in helping us open Polly's House, along with the Polly Friedman Art Gallery on campus in 2009. Lily and David, we can't imagine a more special tribute to your mother, a woman recognized for leaving her mark on the community through her work for social justice. There is no more fitting tribute than to change the lives of single mothers and their children. Thank you for being here today to help us celebrate her wonderful legacy. I joined College Misericordia in 1992. With over 30 years serving in various student-facing positions, I and many others of my colleagues have been mentored by a strong number of impactful women who we know as the Sisters of Mercy. This campus community of students, faculty, and staff continue to be impacted by their work and commitment of service to others. It's through their critical concerns and foundation charisms of mercy, service, justice, and hospitality that we live as a community. These charisms are on full display via immeasurable impact of this house and this program and on the students who live here and who will live here for generations to come. Some, like Amira, who hails from Minnesota, will share her personal reflections momentarily. These sometimes scared, yet awesomely brave women, sometimes arrive from across the country to make a better future for themselves and for their children. As graduates, they leave us as valiant and confident women, women who are mission-inspired. They are leaders of their family and their communities in which they go on to serve. We are so privileged to be part of the next phase of their exceptional journey. And it really is in the impact of the children that, most, that might be the most telling. This two-generational impact is profound. Even if they come as toddlers, these children grow up in a supportive learning environment, knowing their mothers are making a better life for them through education. And this will remain with them forever. As we move closer to celebrating Misericordia's 100th anniversary in 2024 and the Women with Children program's 25th anniversary in 2025, we may soon see the impact carry over to third generations as our families continue to grow. And the rest of our Misericordia students also learn from this program. Not only is our Borger Women with Children emblematic of the governor's model for statewide initiatives, it is certainly a model for our students to see how if you put your mind to it, certainly anything is possible and good things will follow. The many bachelor's, master's, and law degrees earned by our Women with Children graduates are a testament to the impact of this program's power. Since 2013, 80% of the Women with Children graduates have achieved a master's degree or more. I think we can certainly agree that that statistic is certainly remarkable. Yeah. Certainly kudos goes to Director Catherine Polheidel and Program Coordinator Sandy Johnson for their innovation in moving this program forward through exceptional partnerships across the state and across the country, as well as guiding and mentoring these women. They are on duty 24 seven, making this very intensive program work, especially through the pandemic, from handling group dynamics to making sure the children are registered for school and a million of other things in between. Here's a fact for you. The fact that Catherine recently served as maid of honor in the wedding for one of our program alumni is a testament to the impact she and Sandy have on these families, their lives, and certainly their future. Well done to both of you. I'm happy to recognize Judy DeLuca, our first Women with Children alumna from the class of 2002, who has a stellar career in social work at the State Correctional Institution in Dallas. Judy's daughter, Lauren, served in the Air Force, is recently married, and is pursuing a master's degree in social work. 
along with being the owner of her own bakery business in Nevada. Judy, as well as our program graduates and current students, please stand to be recognized. I think we can all say we are tremendously misericordia proud. And I would also like to thank Leadership Northeast and the members of the Cougar Kids Corner project team who lovingly outfitted the children's playroom with furniture, decorations, books, and toys. Everyone here today has had some role in the success of our Burger Women with Children program and its students. On behalf of this entire university, we thank you. And at this time, I'm pleased to introduce Greg Collins, Vice Chair of Misericordia's Board of Trustees, to preside over the dedication. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Good afternoon on this uh, balmy summer day. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be with you uh, today on this very special occasion. With a career in banking, I have been especially mindful of the importance of charitable and government support. For the many deserving nonprofit organizations in our community to benefit those we serve. As a trustee at Misericordia University, I have seen firsthand the impact of such support in allowing our students to achieve their goals and aspirations. Throughout the years, this has included generous contributions for scholarship, new and improved buildings, learning spaces, enhanced athletic facilities, first-rate equipment and technology. What we are witnessing today is a prime example of the power of private and public partnerships coming together to provide life-changing opportunities for students and their families. Generous individuals in our community alongside uh, the government agencies have definitely made this happen. On behalf of our Board of Trustees, I join Catherine and Amy in thanking all of you for your generosity and commitment to, to the Women with Children program. And now, as we gather with Thanksgiving to dedicate Anne's house, in honor and memory of Anne Friedman Glauber, a fitting tribute to a woman described as relentless in her pursuit of social justice and in her commitment to making a positive difference in other people's lives. We dedicate Anne's house to bear witness of the university values that we share with the Sisters of Mercy as the foundation of our university. Mercy through compassion, love and caring. Service through selflessness, sacrifice and action. Justice through fairness, acceptance and advocacy and hospitality with dignity, respect, and openness. May the families of the Ruth Matthew Berger Women with Children program who reside in Ann's house be surrounded and supported by our mercy charisms in order to fulfill their dreams and for the future. And now therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, it is a great honor for me to get, dedicate this structure, this home, to Misericordia families, Anne's house, today, September 27th, 2022. Lily. <laughs> Lily, we believe your mother is smiling upon us today. And I am happy to introduce you, Lily Glauber. Anne's daughter. Hi, everyone. What a great crowd. I am so honored to be here today to celebrate the expansion of the Women with Children program here at Misericordia University and to tell you a little bit about my mother, Anne Friedman Glauber, 
for whom this new beautiful house is named. Our whole family loves this program so much. My grandparents, Sydney and Polly Friedman, were and are so dedicated to this initiative. And my uncle Rob, my cousins Diane and Haley, my brother David and myself are so inspired by the vision and life-changing work that you are all doing here. The Women with Children program is essentially about hope and challenging the status quo and providing educational opportunities to women who have historically been denied this access so that single moms do not have to choose between pursuing their professional dreams and caring for their children, which are all values that resonate deeply with my family. In preparation for today's ceremony, I read a little more about the program and I was, so learned to move, I was so moved to learn that the children of the first cohort of the women with children have entered college themselves. Talk about generational impact. What an expression of love and justice this program is. And I know my mom would be so honored to be connected to this house. And since carrying a name is carrying a legacy, I wanna tell you a little bit about my mom's life and her lessons. My mom was truly a force. Like my grandma Polly, she connected deeply with people and she believed in honoring each person's unique gifts and potential. She was a visionary and she was an ideas person, but she also knew how to take action. She used her time on earth extremely wisely and she lived a rich, full, and unusual life. A few weeks before my mom passed away, my cousin Diane called her to interview her for a high school project that she was doing on someone she admired. She asked my mother a simple question. What is your approach to life? Well, maybe that's not such a simple question, <laughs> but, <laughs> but she asked it. And at the time, my mom was very sick and I honestly wasn't sure if she would have the energy to engage in this conversation, but she rallied and she told Diane, we must live for a higher purpose, for something beyond just ourselves and our own lives. And this central lesson seeped into how my mom parented my brother and me, as well as how she built her whole career. And in some of the darkest and most challenging times in her own life, my mom coped by building lasting initiatives that would help others. My mom formed an organization called the Business Council for Peace, which was dedicated to assisting women in regions of war and conflict develop economic self-sufficiency. And she developed a campaign to address the crisis of intimate partner violence called No More. Both organizations still exist today. She devoted herself to an organization called the Parent Circle, which works with bereaved Palestinians and Israelis together toward peace and reconciliation. And when she was diagnosed with stage four pancreas cancer, at 60 years old, she barely waited for the shock of her diagnosis to wear off before she got right to work, building an organization to change outcomes for people with pancreas cancer called Let's Win. Let's Win also continues to thrive today and offers resources and access to critical information on new treatments to patients. Yet, for all of her accomplishments, our mom often said, that the work she was most proud of was parenting my brother and me. She ran a very tight ship and she was strict in certain ways. My curfew in high school was 10 p.m. She liked to say that nothing good happens after 10 p.m., <laughs> which I actually learned is not true at all. <laughs> but when, when I was growing up, dessert was sometimes just raisins and she often woke us up at 7 a.m. on weekends so that we could be productive. But my mom always pushed my brother and me toward expansive experiences and growth. She fostered our love of learning and adventure, and she nurtured creative, out-of-the-box thinking and problem solving. She also had an appreciation for wildness, and she taught us to be grateful for what we have while we have it, to appreciate life's richness and possibility, and to live with courage even in the midst of difficulty, especially in the midst of difficulty. And as a single mom for many years, 
Our mom often felt the tension between parenting us and pursuing her professional ambitions. Still, doing both was essential to who she was. And I know it would just mean so much to her to be connected to this program, which recognizes that doing both is a right and provides the support for women to do so. She would also be so excited to know that a new group of exceptional and dedicated students and their children will now be living all together in Anne's house. I think about my mom every single day. I have since she passed away, and probably long before that. But she's especially on my mind in this particular era because I am pregnant for the first time. So I'm thinking about her lessons in light of becoming a parent myself hopefully with a valiant woman. <laughs> Today is also the second day of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which is a time of reflection and renewal when we consider how we might improve ourselves in the coming year and further engage in the work of tikkun olam, or repair of the world. And I can't think of a better way to bring in the new year and honor my mother's memory then with the dedication of Anne's house today and the celebration of the Women with Children program, which not only dreams of a better world, but brings that dream to fruition one family at a time. Thank you so much for having us here and thank you for all of the work that you're doing. I now have the pleasure of introducing Misericordia sophomore Amira Mohammed Kony from Minnesota, who enrolled in the Burger Women with Children program last year with her daughter, who is now five years old. Amira has offered to share her thoughts on what the program means to her. Hi, how are you guys doing today? Whew, I wish I could say the same. I'm nervous up here, so bear with, bear with me. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today at Misericordia University. Um, again, my name is Amira Coney, and I'm a current student in the Burger Women with Children program, along with my daughter, Amaya, in the back there with Miss Sandy. Um, we currently live in the Moffitt House across the street. There's the white and red home. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> I would like to begin with some background and history on how I found myself here in the Women with Children program and how my journey led me to Misery Carter University in the program. I recently relocated from Minnesota to Maryland in 2020 with no plan in sight for my daughter and I. I didn't know what God had in store for us, but I knew that he did have a plan. I relocated with the help of my mother with hopes to start over and refresh. But as many of you already know, the East Coast is not cheap, <laughs> coming from the Midwest especially. <laughs> It was not at that time so much about my current housing situation for my daughter and I, but about sustaining that housing. And along with the housing question, other questions surfaced too, like what did I want to do with my life? How could I be a role model for my daughter and at the same time find myself? And lastly, how could I create a home and not just have a roof over our head? Well, <laughs> my mother answered this question with ease by saying, I've helped you get this far and there's no turning back to Minnesota, so something has got to work. So in other words, there's only room for forward thinking. So if I may be honest, I initially ran into the Women with Children program in 2021 with thoughts of just housing, no clear regard to actually being an academic or creating a legacy for myself and my daughter. I just didn't have that type of outlook before, and I was in survival mode. But with some faith, and once I arrived here, again, I knew God had a plan. I just didn't know what that plan entailed. So from here was the start of my marathon, as Nipsey Hussle would say, one of my favorite rappers, by the way. <laughs> I was accepted into the program and now had a safe place to live with my daughter. Which leads me to why having homes and housing supported by the Freemans is so pivotal to my success not only as a student mother, but as a young woman. Having a home became the most crucial factor in my life journey because I was now able to see light at the end of the tunnel. I could now thank God for having a secure place for my daughter and I, but most importantly, I could now get a glimpse of, glimpse of my life's purpose beyond the measures of basic necessities. I could see myself with 2020 vision 
that first, I am a young woman and a mother, and second, I am now a college student too. A great bonus, right? Throughout my time in this program, I have grown to realize that having a home creates a sense of security in three important areas. Security in loving ourselves unconditionally, security in being our authentic selves, and most importantly, the security of growth in all aspects of our lives. There's a difference between having a roof over our head with four walls, windows, and a door, right, versus a home. These homes pro provided to us from the program create a sense of calmness. That sense of calmness and peace brings light to loving ourselves whole wholeheartedly. Being that I have come from a place of trauma, confusion, and self-doubt, the last thing I would want to come home to is more turmoil, right? Having a home has afforded me the opportunity to focus, focus on loving myself first, because if one does not love themselves first, how can they love anyone else? This was something else I could say I secured while on my marathon. I was not only able to love myself, but I had enough stability and peace within to shower love upon my daughter, Amaya. Excuse me, sorry. This was also the start of breaking generational curses. <laughs> of loving someone else without learning to value and love ourselves first. Secondly, having a home created security for my daughter and me so that we could finally be our authentic selves. We were no longer in a place of judgment from the outside world. When we walk into our home, we can build on that love, self-love with authenticity. We became unapologetically ourselves. My daughter and I can now speak our truths, be in the present moment while also gaining perspective on each other all attributes of being our authentic selves through the lens of love. In addition, we can walk out of our homes and spread positivity, love, and authenticity with others we may encounter, whether at school, work, or as my daughter would say, at the playground. <laughs> Lastly, I would just like to briefly touch on how having a home has created security in terms of growth. We as families can now focus on evolving into the best versions of ourselves. It is safe to say, I have grown in tremendous ways parenting-wise, simply from having a peaceful home to parent in. There's nothing better than to hear, Mommy, I love you, or Mommy, I enjoyed spending time with you. This acknowledgement from a child is incomparable to any other acknowledgement. And as I continue to grow as a mom, I can witness changes in myself, like sharing and receiving love and the simple act of hugging. I have now evolved to accepting hugs from my daughter, <laughs> without saying or thinking, well, that's not how I grew up, so I'm not going to do that with her. We are now able to create generational blessings and void generational curses because of our new home, where we are continuing to evolve by loving ourselves and becoming more in tune within. So I thank the Friedman family for dedicating these two homes in memory of Pauli and Ann to our Women with Children program. Their example of what a mother and daughter can do, how they can impact our lives, even through their legacy of helping others, remains with us today. Thank you all for being a part of our marathon, for supporting our journey toward college degrees and bettering our lives for ourselves and our children. We are all very grateful. Thank you.
I was going to sit back down, but that was amazing. Thank you. We're so proud of you. We also have a lot of tissues around for... <laughs> Sandy and I always joke that we like cry constantly. We just forewarn everybody. So that's, that's just how we are because we're real. Bless most loving God, this home. Bless most loving God, all who dwell here, our women, our children. May Anne's house be for our women and children, a sanctuary of rest and peace, of recreation and love. May it also be a place of hospitality for friends and strangers alike. May all that takes place here remind us of the many times and ways that you nourish us consistently and generously. Ever living presence, may all who pray here be open to your mysterious ways. Keep calling their hearts and remind them of your abiding love. We bless all the space in this dwelling. May love be evident in the corners of this home so that all who enter here will experience and know your love and abiding presence. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. So we're going to affix a mezuzah to the door. A mezuzah is a, uh, the mezuzah actually means doorpost. I mean, it's not a big deal. But uh, <laughs> we're supposed to be thinking about God as we enter a home and thinking about God when we leave the home. And if we do that, we'll be kinder and gentler inside and kinder and gentler with friends and family and total strangers outside. And so the tradition is to put a mezuzah up. And this is a mezuzah from, from Temple Israel. And it's got the birkat habayit, the blessing of the bayit, of the home. May this home be blessed with kindness and peace. And the idea is to, to a lot of people, what they do is they kind of touch it on their way in and then maybe touch their, their as if they're kissing the, uh, the mezuzah. So it's always on the right side as you're entering. We're, it's usually placed a little higher on the doorpost, but since we've got kids that are here, <laughs> any kids that are going to be here in here that are here right now? They're napping. They're napping. Okay, <laughs> fine. We're not going to wake them. Uh, but we'll move it down a little bit so they can get to it too. Uh, the idea of, uh, of putting this up in Anne's memory is, is really important. It's called Hanukkah Tabait. I don't know if you saw that in the in the uh, program there. Uh, it's actually a, what do you have an H in, in, in there for it or a CH? CH. CH, all right, so that's ch. And you don't want to do that during COVID. I right? <laughs> don't want to say the letter even during COVID, but we do. Hanukkah Tabayit is like the holiday of Hanukkah. And what did Hanukkah represent? 2,000 years ago, uh, a little bit more than that, maybe about 165 or so BC, BCE, when the Syrian Greeks destroyed Jerusalem, but they put up, a, in, inside the temple of Jerusalem, they put up all kinds of uh, Greek gods in there, Zeus and the Pantheon and everything like that. And when they left, when they were sent away by the Judah the Maccabee, if you remember the story, if you saw the Rugrats version of Hanukkah, right? You'd know it. Uh, when they were sent away, they rededicated the temple and they found a cruise of oil that only was supposed to last one night and miraculously it lasted how many nights? Eight, eight nights. Everyone knows that. Eight, right? <laughs> eight nights it lasted. It was amazing. All right? Because a little bit of light can last a long time. Anne was filled with light. She was not only enlightened, but she enlightened the rest of us. And her generosity and her spirit always continues. So it's not just going to last for eight days, although the sticky thing may come off and we're going to have to get it back up there better. But it's going to last forever throughout all the beautiful lives that are going to go through this doorway and come out and do something really special in this world. So we're going to affix the mezuzah and as we do, there's a blessing we say and 
You'll repeat after me, okay? So who's putting it up? So it'll just stick right over. Okay, ready? Baruch. Baruch. Atah. Atah. Adonai. Adonai. Eloheinu. Eloheinu. Melech. Melech. Got the ch in there. <laughs> Haolam. Haolam. Asher. Asher. Kiddushanu. Bemitzvotav. Vitzifanu. Lehadbik. Mezuzah. Okay, and that means the Javal joined Temple Israel, and you're going to get. <laughs> so it's blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us with commandments and commanded us to attach a mezuzah to our homes, so that it's there for the future, that it's there for us, it's there for kindness and goodness and happiness and health and everything that Sister Jean said in her blessing and her prayer. All right, and we can say Amen. And then we say, Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov to everybody. Congratulations. Okay. Good. Good. Good.